Hey everyone, it's Bradley, back again with another video. This is your first time here, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate you stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to do an in-depth tutorial on how to mash on your brew tools brewing equipment. I'm also gonna share some new techniques that I've developed towards the very end of the video. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching, then please like, subscribe, and stick around. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is add in our water. I know it uh, seems obvious, but I'm gonna include it. Next step, you'll slide in the malt pipe. It's kinda tricky, let's kinda get used to it. Set that guy in there just so. Then you'll grab the new laser cut filter and uh, slide it in. Sometimes I'll get a little splash, 50-50 whether or not I do. Keeps it interesting. Here's a look at the valve position I have when I first uh, start mashing and throughout the entire mash and sparge. This keeps the wart swirling around the outside of the mash tun. Uh, I keep it flowing at 100% pump. Next, we'll start doughing in. Adding the grain is one of the most critical steps. This brew is a Berliner Weisse and really low alcohol, so it's an extremely runny mash. If you weren't doing such a low gravity beer, you definitely want to be stirring this as you go taking your time, making sure everything is well incorporated. In this particular brew, I'm not going to because I just don't need to. Furthermore, if you guys are considering a Brew Tools B80 or if you own one and you're struggling, you definitely need to own your own mill, in my opinion. Don't rely on someone else to crush your grains. Uh, different types of grain, wheat and Pilsner malt, for instance, need to be crushed differently. Rye, the same thing. You'll find this will affect your efficiency. So just, you know, stir everything in, incorporate it. If you don't have a laser cut filter, definitely be a little more gentle as you get towards the bottom, towards the stock filters. They just are not as robust and are not as good. I really hope at some point the laser cut filter will become standard equipment. Next, it's time for the 20 minute mash rest. Next up, I'm dropping in my recirculation manifold. I prefer this uh, technique. Mine has been bent just so with near perfection so we'll almost kind of uh, I, I can suspend it at any given point within the malt pipe like I said it's bent with near perfection if you guys are still using the mash hat that's no problem all of these steps are going to be the same and everything will work just about the same I do prefer this method next up no matter what you're doing make sure you lube either the mash hat or the recirculation fitting it really helps everything go together nicely and you won't destroy any seals. Just push it on firmly. Next, I'm dropping in the prototype mash temperature probe. I really found this to be a useful tool and convenient because it's hooked up to my controller. This is the position of the valve for recirculation roughly. I can't stretch how critical it is pay attention to this valve, you're gonna to have to adjust it based on pump speed. This is the intake valve. You can see it's pointing towards the kettle. That means that the wart's going that direction. I'm just adjusting my dip tube how I want it. I'm adjusting the valve now so I can get recirculation started and I'm doing it very gently. You can see now recirculation is beginning and I'm just cracking that valve open ever so slowly until I have a, a flow rate that I think is suitable. The flow rate, the experience will just come with practice. Practice, practice, practice. That equals more beer, right? So that's great. There's that wart starting to flow, nice and steady, not rushing it or pushing it. Just kind of monitor it slowly once you guys get this set, it should be pretty good until you get to the next kind of a mash out step. Like any skill, brewing takes practice. Practice, practice, practice. Don't let yourself get down if you're only getting 74% efficiency or 72%. It's not the end of the world. Grain is cheap. So I've been mashing for just a few minutes now. You can see the wart flowing 
around the outside of the malt pipe in my flow inside with that manifold. I also forgot to add my, uh, my acid adjustment, so I'm doing that now. Maybe I should have used some acidulated malt. It's a ton of lactic acid. We're a little bit further on in the mashing process. You can see it's starting to kind of get clear. It's not quite as milky as it was when we started. Here we are even further. It's really starting to clear nicely at this point. You can see I've left my flow rate about the same. That new laser cut filter really does the job as well as my grain crush being dialed in precisely. Even further on, you can tell by the water levels in there, the residual. I haven't had any issues with any uh, level changes or anything like that. It's time to get your sparge water ready. You want to make sure that you have that ready in advance and heat it up. There's my uh, HLT. All right, it's time to mash it out. I'm punching the temperature in to 167 and starting a timer. Here we are through the mash out process at 167. Warts nicely clear. Just look at that. Super clear through that new style sight glass. The thing's really growing on me. Just subscribe. Seriously, it's smash the button. If you don't like the video, subscribe. I appreciate it. Right before you sparge, make sure you adjust the lower valve so it's going up through the center pipe. You don't want to dump fresh water into the vessel. Next, I'm hooking up my tri-clamps and my hoses to my HLT. I'm also using that new half inch to 34 millimeter tri-camp with the rubber seal. No need for tape. It's a nice and compact piece. Uh, it's really useful. It fits this Blickman valve nicely. Just get your tri-clamps tight. Not a big deal here. Same thing on my T for my pressure relief. Just hook up the tri-clamp, get it tight and get ready to start sparging. I use a, another uh, one-way valve to isolate my pump. I prefer to leave it isolated uh, until I'm absolutely ready to start sparging. I just pulled the pressure relief and that basically primed my hose instantly, no fussing around or anything, super seamless. I'm getting ready to turn the pump on just release the one-way valve. There's the pump kicking on. You see it instantly worked. There wasn't any fussing around. Really good flow. And there is the sparge. It's just starting. I just ease it in really slow. I, uh, I pump, the, pump it uh, not more than 40, 50% usually. This is the entire sparge sped up. You get an idea that I just really kind of milk it along and don't let the water get too high on top of the grain bed, turning it off and on and pulsing it the entire time. This is critical for efficiency. Do not cheat this step. That's it, I'm done sparging. The last running, you can see there's hardly any grain protruding through. It's that simple. All right, everyone, thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. I hope I was able to teach you something or at the very least entertain you. I'll be back real, real soon with another great video, so remember, as always, this has been Bradley, home brewing is good, and I'll see you real, real soon.